How can we explain the origin of viruses from an evolutionary perspective? Where did the very first viruses come from? These are the questions I'm going to be exploring in this presentation, my contribution to our virtual Darwin Day 2021. Viruses actually come in lots of shapes and sizes. All forms of life that we know of have viruses that are specific to them. Every form of life is the host for some kind of virus. Uh, the tobacco mosaic virus in the far left is kind of the simplest form that viruses can take. Uh, the agnovirus um, would be a virus that infects people, mostly children, causing cold-like symptoms. The influenza virus is something more similar to uh, the novel coronavirus that's infecting us now. Um, my next slide will be exploring uh, a virus typical of this kind of structure in a more minimalistic way, kind of a, what I call a stick virus. D there shows a bacteriophage, the kind of virus that infects bacteria. So the, there's my basic, um, you know, stick virus. If this was the novel coronavirus, it would be RNA as the genetic material. Um, and it would have lots of those envelope glycoproteins creating a corona, right? which means a crown around the virus. You might be surprised to learn that viruses generally are considered to be non-living. They are not alive. They are definitely biological, but they're not actually living. Viruses lack most of the characteristics that are common to all living organisms. So although viruses are made out of the same chemicals as cells, they are not actually cells. They don't have cellular structure. And all life as we know it is made out of cells. Viruses don't have metabolism. They don't go through processes like photosynthesis or cell respiration. They don't have enzymatic metabolism. Viruses don't grow. They are produced and that's how big they are. They don't have the capacity to grow. They don't have the cellular machinery. They don't again have the enzymatic metabolism to fuel growth. Finally, viruses do not have self-reproduction. Viruses don't reproduce, they are produced when they gain access into a living host cell. This illustration does a, a nice job of visualizing how viruses are produced. So viruses are very host cell specific. The host cell for a virus is one that has surface receptors that are complementary to the proteins or glycoproteins that are embedded in the envelope that makes up the surface of the virus. This is similar to um, the coronaviruses, right? So the corona is this layer of spike proteins or glycoproteins, and unfortunately for us, they match with receptors that allow the virus to stick to the host cell, and the host cell actually brings the virus in. Once inside, the capsid a layer of protein is shed, and the virus's genetic material, in this case RNA, is exposed to the cell. The cell at this point will be hijacked, genetically hijacked, by that viral genetic material. The host cell will use its own resources, its own energy, its own machinery to copy the virus's genetic material and use the genes contained in it to produce viral proteins. 
and these proteins assemble spontaneously into new viruses if they capture a bit of the genome and bud off from that cell to go on and potentially infect other cells. There are several reasons why you might get sick from a viral infection. One is the loss of cell function that results from this infected cell wasting all of its energy and resources on making new viruses instead of doing whatever that cell is supposed to do. And then we have the immune response that might come from your immune system detecting this virus and the fever and inflammation that goes along with the viral infection are side effects of that immune response. This is a human white blood cell. Uh, all those grayish blue specks are human immunodeficiency viruses. The cell is shedding viruses into the environment of the host. So although viruses lack many of the key characteristics of life, the one thing they do in common with cellular life is evolve. And they can do so rapidly. So remember, um, genetic variation is the raw material of evolution. The promoter regions on viral genetic material um, leads to very rapid replication within the host cell. So host cells are rapidly replicating the virus and when you do things fast you make mistakes and that leads to lots of genetic variation and different strains of viruses. Mutations and recombinations that that provides the fuel for viral evolution. Viruses basically can evolve through natural selection. It is the host immune system that's trying to fight the virus and providing selection pressure. So back to our primary question. Where did the very first viruses come from? This is actually an area of active research and we're going to look at three possible hypotheses to answer that question where did the first viruses come from? Hypothesis number one is that viruses evolved independently of early cells, going all the way back to the origin of life itself. We're suggesting here that viruses emerged early on as parasites, genetic parasites, that utilized the emerging living cells and as life diversified, as cellular life diversified, viruses diversified along with them. So if we, if we take this simple tree of life here, life has three branches, the bacteria, the archaea, and the eukarya. They're all descended from a common ancestor, the first cellular life emerged from a prebiotic, mostly RNA-dominated uh, um, mixture of chemicals. So what I'm suggesting here is that we have this kind of shadow tree of viruses that emerged way back to the beginning as life-diversified viruses diversified. So hypothesis number one, viruses are ancient. They emerged as cells emerged. They've always been around. They have diversified as cellular life has diversified. A second hypothesis is that viruses used to be cellular. They represent very highly evolved bacteria or prokaryotes that became parasitic and they've just lost their cellular structure. They are 
drive to the point where they don't need to make proteins, the host cell will do that for them, right? So they just lost their cellular baggage and now um, they have been reduced to the minimum. And you know, that's a trend we see in parasitic living organisms is a loss of lots of structures and functions that the host cell takes over. Over the past few decades, some discoveries have been made that support this idea that viruses may have at one time been cellular. There are two lineages of huge viruses, huge from the perspective of cells and molecules. They're called uh, Mimi viruses and Pandora viruses. And they, are, they sort of straddle the line between a cell and a virus. They have very large genomes, in some cases larger than some bacteria. So if you do a Google search for uh, Mimi virus or Pandora virus, you can see headlines like this. Missing link between viruses and cells. Right, huge new virus defies classification. Our third hypothesis is that viruses could have evolved from the genomes of the very cells that they now infect. That a virus might represent bit of DNA or RNA that has sort of gone rogue that has escaped the confines of a cell and now moves from cell to cell, packaged up in just enough cellular material to gain access to host cells. Evidence of this idea comes from observations of a few genetic elements that move around within cells or even between cells. One of these movable genetic elements are called transposons. They're, they're also called jumping genes. So the odd thing about them is they don't have a permanent location on the cell's chromosomes. They can be excised from one spot, move around and inserted into other spots. So if you took that little bit of DNA and moved it from one organism to another, that's sort of what a virus is. There are also genetic elements called retro elements. Retro elements are small pieces of DNA that are transcribed into RNA and then get reverse transcribed back into DNA and reinserted in different places. So we have this little segment called ALU in our genome that appears like a million times over, over evolutionary history. It has replicated and reinserted itself into our genome in many places. A third virus-like element is seen in bacteria. They're called plasmids. Plasmids are circular DNA molecules that can move from cell to cell when two bacteria conjugate or if a bacteria dies and the plasmids released in the environment, other bacteria can pick it up and bring it in and integrate it into their genome. So we do have these weird genetic elements that are movable and perhaps represent what a precursor to a virus might have been like. Now, the reality here is that perhaps viruses are the result of all three of these origin stories. We may have viruses that have originated way back deep in time, came from the genome of their host cell, and or represent highly evolved parasitic bacteria. So the original origin of viruses, that's a pretty complicated story. I, I want to finish up this presentation by also talking about 
um, where new viruses come from today. So uh, although viruses are very host cell specific, they can sometimes jump to a whole new host species. And the repercussions of that are quite variable. Um, it is common for parasites to evolve sort of a relationship with their host where the host immune system gets some experience with the pathogen, the parasite, and develop some defenses. When viruses jump to brand new hosts, their immune system might be totally naive and it may cause very serious disease. Mutations can increase virulence. Virulence is the ability to cause disease. And here's a bad situation. If you have a host cell, that's already infected with one kind of virus and another virus uh, gets into that whole same host cell, you can get recombination between viruses and get a mashup virus that has totally new properties. So there are emerging viral diseases like the novel coronavirus that causes COVID. It just popped up out of nowhere it seems like right the last 20 years has been filled with some nasty diseases that seem to have popped up out of nowhere because viruses made a jump often from a non-human animal to a human some of these include bird flu the human immunodeficiency virus Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, another coronavirus respiratory disease, West Nile virus, Ebola, swine flu. These are all things I'm sure you've heard of. These are viral diseases that um, made a jump from non-human animals to humans. Here's an old picture of myself before I turn gray. It's not that old, but it's old enough. And I'm offering myself up here as a sacrificial victim. And I want you to think about which arrows go with which of those viruses. Well, you can probably uh, easily figure out the pig as the source of swine flu, right? And that's a double arrow because pig influenza viruses can jump to people and people viruses can jump to pigs, right? Uh, the duck at the top, that's a source of bird flu. Um, it came out of South Asia where people were raising waterfowl in very close quarters, probably in open air markets where a bunch of birds were crammed into cages and they're sick and they're sneezing and they're spreading viruses and people are picking it up. Um, HIV comes from primates, from chimps, and it probably made the jump to people when people were killing and butchering chimps for meat. That civet, the stripy guy there, it's a type of mongoose, that's the source of the SARS outbreak a few years ago. Um, it's been speculated that Ebola came from bats and West Nile virus comes from crows. That's a natural reservoir of the virus. If a mosquito bites a crow that has the virus and then a mosquito bites a person, you can get the West Nile virus. It's still not clear uh, where the SARS COVID virus came from. Um, really, it's, uh, it's been blamed on bats, but that may not be the case. There's a consensus uh, among conservation biologists and ecologists that the degradation of our natural ecosystems and the loss of biodiversity and people hunting and eating bush meat is a primary driver or drivers of the spread of viruses to people. If we had healthier ecosystems, if we weren't um, 
raising animals in unhealthy conditions, if we weren't um, harvesting wild animals and selling them for meat under unsanitary conditions, we would have much less of this transmission of viruses to people. Here's one last slide. I found this on the internet. It's kind of cute and gross, but uh, talk about uh, a vector there for the spread of germs from the pig to people. There you go. Bye.